All right, this is a 2014 Ram 1500, and uh, I'm going to do the, just the front pads, not the rotors this time. Um, I watched a video from Jim, the car guy, and it was excellent. He does it in the garage. He's a real pro. Um, so from here, I, I just wanted to show you a different perspective and go through the quick steps. So I would suggest watching Jim's video and this one so that you have um, both perspectives. All right, so I want to quick go through what you'll need so you can get it together because as everyone knows, that's like the hardest, longest part. Um, this is a 13 millimeter socket and this is important. This is a 17 millimeter wrench. Um, thank, thank God to Earl. I have to shout out to him may he rest in peace um, got a bunch of tools from him years ago and it always seems the exact right thing is there for me um, this is one single wrench and you can see it's a 17 and I found it in his stuff so thanks again Earl and so you need the the 13 socket, the 17 wrench. I would suggest some tie straps if you're working on the, dri the driveway. Um, some of the, the ceramic grease, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, or just you know regular uh, brake grease for the for the pins if you like, um, and uh, something to uh, compress the uh, the pistons. Um, once you've gotten this all, when you're going back the other direction. Um, and a little pry bar would be helpful. And of course, you know, brake cleaner. So, um, when I did the other side, I, I got it, I think I got it backwards. Um, I know one of these was heating up. I thought it was the driver's side, but I actually think it's the passenger side that's doing it. So the other side went really smoothly. Um, I have a feeling that I'm, since I'm recording this one, Murphy's Law dictates that this will be the one that's a pain. Because um, it does seem like there is there was some heat um, corrosion on the on the lugs. So, but we'll find out together. So the first thing we want to do is take off the caliper and that's where this thin wrench really comes into play sorry about that uh, so you can't really fit a normal wide wrench up onto the back of the slider so that's where this is like super super handy because you don't want this nut to spin so and then the 13 goes on the back that up try and glance at the camera so I can see if you can see okay we'll just leave that loose and do the bottom which you can't really see Sometimes they won't move without, they, they still won't spin without the wrench, but you don't want to take that chance. You don't want to mess up the boot. Get your impact driver stuck. do is loosen up the pistons a little bit so we'll just look in there and you'll be able to see where the back of the pad is and you'll be able to see the lip of the piston so you just take it and pry it a little bit 
Now when you press on one piston, the other piston comes out. So I'll just do this back and forth a couple times just so that it loosens it up. And you'll be able to tell because the caliper will want to start coming out. And that's, you want that easy. Almost there. So I'm just going to set this here for one second because Jim said this too, you say it a thousand times, you don't want it hanging on the, the hose. Uh, so what I will usually do is take a tie strap, sometimes two. I'll just add a second one. This one should be good. And we'll clip that off when we're done. This will actually make it easier too to compress these. Uh, so, um, and I'll show you that. In a minute, but let's take off the pads. Uh, these clips are important. Obviously, if for some reason they don't come with the set, make sure you go back and get them because, uh, and I'll show you that on the new ones, they simply they assist in the pad reflexing away from the disc and you don't want them dragging and you know even if they look good they'll break so replace them so that's one and two and they look pretty good but you can maybe you can or cannot see that let me get the correct angle uh, how one is worn other more than the other um, that means that at some point these pins got got stuck I mean you can see they're sliding pretty good um, but we'll make sure they get all cleaned and greased um, and they just pull out this rubber boot pops off and you want to check those for cracking and if they are cracked you have to replace them um, because it'll just keep happening again. Um, I tow my trailer a lot, so um, these aren't the upgraded heavy-duty brakes, which I'd love to do, um, but so they will uh, get overheated at times. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quick take a break here and clean this up and get us ready to go the other way. So for whatever reason, the channel locks kept slipping out of my hand so I just decided to go with the C-clamp and I just took a piece of scrap steel and tucked it in there and clamped it down. You don't have to only go enough to get the pads on so that's why I like the channel locks because I'll go and I'll do some and then if it's not enough I can just quick put it on there and crimp it down some more. Um, the other thing too is sometimes all you got to do is get it moving a little bit so you clamp, move the one piston a little bit move the other and this one will come back out then but once they're moving then doing this part's a lot easier all right so um i got the pins greased and i in the past i've always used the uh the spray on anti-squeal for the back of the pads or wipe on or put it there um a lot of more premium pads have these plates that help with that and you'll see they're slotted um the other thing too is, because uh, I've had problems with this truck before with squealing brakes, and um, I do believe that it has something to do with multi-piston uh, uh, multi calipers. Uh, single piston calipers may not have, may, you may prefer to use the spray-on anti-squeal. So I just wanted to show you this too. When you grease up your uh, slider pins just make sure the boot snaps back on so that it's not sliding do that with the bottom one and again make sure you check these for cracks and whatnot and then I already put the clips on the pads it might be a little clutchy here so just bear with me these are marked inner and outer so and I almost 
put the outer on the inner on the outer. Um, so we'll get them in there. see, I mean, the new springs, obviously, they're going to get beat up on first use, but they definitely have a lot more spring in them. <laughs> and if you get anything on the, pa on the pad itself, just wipe it off. It's, talk about don't get anything on the pad. Like it's, the world's gonna end, but I'm trying to vamp there for a second. I could have this. There it is. Again, these will get pressed in, but you can see the action in that spring. Right, and then I greased up the other thing along with not using the uh, the anti squeal is I let's see if I can tilt you again. I greased up. Well, I guess it would help at this point. Greased up the contact points, and then also greased up where the pistons contact. That'll just help everything not stick. As I mentioned before, it looks like I'm going to need to do a little bit more. like to, like I said, I, I do like to keep it at a minimum just because that's less possibility for when you go to bleed, help air in the lines. Watching me do this. Did that one more squeeze and that let me slip it on there. So we'll line up to the slider and just thread the bolt in. I'm just going to set my uh, impact wrench to a low torque setting, get them in there, and then come back with the torque wrench, which I forgot to mention. So that's just snugged in there, but that's all there is to it. And uh, 
put the wheel back on and you're back in action.